In this video, I'm going to tell you some ways that you can create a good Instagram story that will intrigue your audience and keep them watching until the very end. Let's get started right now. Hey there, I'm Todd.Live. I'm all about helping you learn how to create quality videos to grow your brand and business. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to tell better Instagram stories so that when the audience clicks on your story, they're interested with what you have to say and they stay until the end. As you know, Instagram stories are an important part of any video marketing campaign for any brand or business out there. They're incredibly easy to create and they don't take any time at all, which is unusual for video. And they allow your audience a peek behind the curtain so that they can get to know you a lot better and trust your brand and trust your message. And because I know many of you don't even know how to create an Instagram story, I'm also going to show you how you can do that quickly and easily. But before we begin, be sure to hit the subscribe button if learning about how to grow your business with quality video is something that you're interested in. And be sure to hit the bell as well so that you're notified. I'm dropping videos on a weekly basis, if not more often, and I'd love to be able to help you out. Okay, so really quick. How do you create an Instagram story in the first place? Okay, to get started, I'm going to bring my phone up on the screen right now. And the first thing you see when you go into Instagram, you're going to see something different because you're probably not following Vortex Radar like I am. But this is the screen that you're going to see when you go into Instagram. And in order to do a story, you hit the button in the top left, the little camera icon, and it takes you to this screen. And this screen is, of course, can be flipped over to where you're facing my computer, but instead you're going to face me and I can start recording by hitting the button in the center and telling my story. So this is my story and today we're going to talk about creating an Instagram story. What do you think about that? So this is my story and today we're going to talk about creating an Instagram story. What do you think about that? So I'm not going to send that out, but at the bottom right hand corner was the send to publish button and that's how you send the video on into Instagram story. So it's very quick and easy. And what's nice about this is you've got your phone everywhere you go. So there's no reason you're not creating content. <laughs> Same for me. And I'm not, I haven't been good at it for the last couple of months, creating content on the go, uh, daily life stories. And we're going to talk a little bit about that right now. So let me go ahead and ditch the phone because we don't need that for me to tell you how to create good Instagram stories. So the first thing about telling good Instagram stories is to always be on the lookout when you're out and about for good quality Instagram stories. They're all around you in your daily life. Even things that might seem like minutia to you are going to be good stories. Things that people are going to be entertained by, things that people can relate to, things that touch people on an emotional level. So you always want to be aware when you're out and about, hey, I might want to check in with my audience today and create a quick Instagram story. You can create, I mean, they're 15 second segments, so you can easily create something entertaining and enjoyable in under a minute. It's really quite amazing. Secondly, you don't need your Instagram story to be perfect. That's the beauty of Instagram stories. It doesn't take any time to make it. There's no editing. There's no pre-production. There's no scripting. I mean, you can do that kind of stuff if you want to, but for most of us, Instagram stories isn't about a formal, uh, uh, real produced production video. It's, it's about on the fly stuff. It's about having quick discussions with people as though you were with them and they were walking beside you or they were standing in line with you somewhere. The best stories involve real life content on the fly, thoughts that you have or reactions you have to something that you've come across out and about. People want to see that stuff. They want to see what you think, hear what you think, and see what it is you're seeing and be a part of your journey. You might think that a lot of this kind of stuff would be trivial, but don't fool yourself. This is what people are looking for. Instagram stories has amazing retention and it has amazing interest by the people out there. People are scrolling their Instagram and they go into their stories on a regular basis. People in the audience, trust me, they're going to appreciate getting to know you better. And one of the ways they do that brings me to my third point. The best stories that you tell need to be relatable stories, okay? Things that people understand, things that people can relate to. You know, if you have a particular reaction to something that happens to you when you're out and about, there's going to be a lot of people in your audience who feel for you because they've been through the same kind of thing. 
and they like people out there like to know that there's others who experience life the way they do it adds to their comfort in life and what it's going to do is add to their comfort in trusting and liking you to know that somebody they follow somebody they're interested in somebody they're learning from somebody they might want to do business with is a normal person who has normal feelings and emotions and reacts in similar ways to they do the way they do when they're out in the field so you know, it's kind of like giving people a warm blanket when you give them something relatable, something that they can um, understand and empathize with. I mean, it's it's amazing how well and how far that goes in telling your story and getting people to connect to it. For instance, one story that I've talked about on a regular basis, it sounds you're going to think this is silly, but it's not because I get a ton of interactions from it and mostly positive but I'm a Diet Coke drinker. I love Diet Coke. And I hate when I go to a restaurant, and I'm ready to sit down and eat some pizza or a taco or something like that. And a Diet Coke is something I'm looking forward to having. And I, the waiter comes up and I say, yeah, I'd like to have a Diet Coke. And they say, I'm sorry, sir. We only serve Pepsi. Would that be okay? Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi's never okay. Okay. So that's left me with a conundrum. And I know it's a trivial conundrum, but it's a conundrum that people out there can relate to. Whether they agree with you on diet coke versus pepsi they might not care but maybe they uh, like a particular kind of beer or maybe they like a particular kind of food done a certain way and they go sit down in a restaurant and they're they can't order what they like okay maybe they like regular shoestring fries and the restaurant only serves curly fries whatever it is your diet coke versus pepsi story is going to resonate with people in many ways and it lets people know a little bit about you they feel like they're getting to know you you know another thing that happens to me on a regular basis is, is there's there's a few artists musical artists and bands that i'm not really fond of bob seeger the who i know blasphemy right you all are going to probably turn off the video now but bob Sp seeger the who you too i mean bruce springsteen they, every time I turn on the car, one of those four artists is on my radio every single time. And I've made that a running storyline in my Instagram stories. And there's people out there that'll tell me, hey, I heard a Bob Seger song and I thought of you. Imagine that. I teach video. I teach podcasting. You know, I'm just a regular guy out there trying to scratch out a living and have a good life and, and have some fun and help other people. And, you know, I my storytelling has it's been such that if Bob Seeger comes on the radio in a lot of people's cars, they immediately think of Todd dot live. Okay. That's the power of storytelling. That's the power of trivial content that when you talk about trivial stuff, it will remind people of you. So you've got to come up with your own things and make them real. Don't make stuff up in order to just have relatable content, make them real. I mean, I really do dislike Pepsi. I really do love diet Coke. So it's become a theme. I really don't like turning on my car and Bob Seger or the who is on my radio every single time, probably because I talk about it. It's happening more. So we kind of touched on that. But my next point is, is make Instagram stories that appeal to people's emotions, love, joy, happiness, uh, fear, anger, um, excitement, um, surprise, you know, some of those things are negative that I just mentioned. Some of them are positive and it's my opinion that you need to be more positive than negative for sure. But people still want to get to know you as a human being and human beings are going to react negatively to things just as they're going to react positively to things. So think about that. You don't need to make your Instagram stories appear as though your life is a bunch of puppy dogs and ice cream. You need to be real, okay? Share with people when you're having an up day. Share with people when you're being positive and when you're being um, productive and things are going your way. But also share with them your frustrations, your disappointments, your setbacks. These things help make you real and people can feel for you and they think about you and they reach out and talk to you about the things that you're going through or experiencing, whether it's a positive experience or a negative experience. So you can share it all. Relatable stories sell. Emotional stories sell. Think about what you watch on TV every night. I mean, The Bachelor happens to be on right now. My wife watches it, so therefore I watch it and it's in front of me or I'm listening to it and doing something else. But I mean, that's two or three hours of emotion from beginning to end. And there's happy moments and then there's pitfalls and, and sad moments. And people go from crying to screaming to happy to having fun to crying to screaming to having fun. It's a roller coaster ride of emotions. And I'm not saying that your Instagram stories needs to be like an episode of Bachelor. In fact, um, it probably would be a real train wreck if it was. But 
um, you know, don't be scared to bring people along for the ups and downs. That's what sells stories. And then on a more technical note for my final point, you want to try to make stories that have a beginning, a middle and an end. And I'm not saying script it out and write it all out, but you know, you could, the beginning could be a teaser, like what's to come. Let's say that you're going to talk for a full minute and you're dividing it up into 15 second segments or something like that in your, in your head, kind of thinking about how you're going to do this. You might make your first segment, hey, this is what I'm talking about, or, you know, ask a question to the audience, something that you're going to answer in the next segment or the next couple of segments, something that kind of leads them on. So you want to kind of tease or hook them in at the beginning, and then you give them the meat, the discussion, the experience, your thoughts, whatever, and then conclude it, you know, happy ending, sad ending, you know, send them off with a positive uh, experience somehow, like, hey, I hope you're having a great day, or I hope your day's better than mine, or I know my day's going to get better because aside from this, my day's been great. I mean, you, you wrap it up at the end with something, um, you know, and kind of make it a beginning, middle, middle and an end so that you bring people along through a story and they know when it ends. And my final point is just start creating stories. Okay. Think about it. These stories disappear in 24 hours and you can delete them if you're not happy with them, but in 24 hours, they're gone. Poof. The world will never see them again. I'm sure there's a database somewhere at Instagram where they hold all this content, but it's not, I mean, it's not going to be out for public consumption ever again. So think of this as kind of like a proving ground, a place where you can get accustomed to talking to people, get accustomed to talking to a camera, get accustomed to talking to people all over the world and through a camera, get accustomed to talking to your camera in a public place, get accustomed to telling stories, get accustomed to coming up with ways to relate to your audience and to make connections with your audience. Instagram stories is a fabulous place, especially if you're wanting to use video like on YouTube and on LinkedIn to promote your brand or business. Instagram stories is a great and safe place for you to create content that um, you can experiment with and have fun with and do it without a huge investment of time, without a huge investment of money, without actually even more important than a huge investment of time and money for you, you're not asking your audience for a huge investment of time or money or attention. People's audiences, audience, or people's attention span is small, okay? People are always clicking to the next thing. So it's important to make good stories and this allows you to practice that skill in an environment where people are looking for that. They're looking for imperfection. I mean, they're not, they're not looking for it so they can point out, and, ah, you screwed up and said the wrong thing. No, they're looking though for imperfect video. They come to YouTube and they're looking for more perfect video. They go to LinkedIn and they're looking for more perfect video. They go to your website and they're looking for more perfect video. But in your Instagram stories, they're just looking for reality. They're just looking for fun. They're looking for emotion. Maybe they're looking, I mean, you know, the surprise hardship, like I said, getting a, hey, do you want Pepsi? You know, that's a major heartbreak for somebody who's a Diet Coke lover. They're looking for those sorts of experiences in Instagram stories, and it's up to you to give it to them. So if you're new to Instagram stories, let me bring up my phone again. If you're new to Instagram stories, be sure, or Instagram for that matter, be sure to find me over on Instagram. Todd.live is my account, and you're welcome to follow me over there. I treat my account at Instagram, the private messaging, like a text message service. So if you want to reach out to me, I much prefer a comment down below here on YouTube, but... If you want to reach out to me and get a response and talk privately, you can send me a private message at Todd.live. And again, if you like this kind of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell if you want to receive notifications. And folks, that's a wrap. I will see you in the next video. I hope this video helps out. Talk to you soon.